On September 14, 2023, in the Mexican Congress, there were hearings about UFOs. Mexican journalist Jamie Mousen presented two tiny bodies with elongated heads and three fingers on each hand. Mousen claimed these mummies were found in Peru in 2017 and have extraterrestrial origins. This event stirred up international reactions, and critics dismissed it as a trick, doubting whether the alleged alien mummies were real. However, former U.S. Navy pilot Ryan Graves disagrees with those who question the finding. He insists that most incidents involving human-alien contact are true, and the government carefully conceives many of them. Let's dive into the most significant cases of human-alien contact to figure out whether information about visitors from outer space is a carefully planned government operation, a mere hoax, or the real deal. We'll find out if anyone has ever witnessed a genuine UFO and whether there are actual aliens described in the Bible. Experts from the University of California claim that extraterrestrials might reach out to humans as early as 2029. Here's the scoop. Back in 2002, NASA sent radio waves to the Pioneer 12 probe for communication purposes. They also sent signals from Earth to other probes to figure out where those signals could travel and what kind of objects they might come across on their journey. According to scientists, sooner or later, those signals will reach representatives of an alien race, and they'll surely send a response signal to Earth. But what if aliens have been actively seeking contact with humans for quite some time? This footage was released on May 14, 2021 by documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. A spherical flying object was spotted off the coast of San Diego. The video shows the UFO hovering in the sky and then suddenly plunging into the ocean. According to Corbell, the footage was captured on July 15, 2019 from the deck of the U.S. Navy ship called Omaha. The video caused quite a stir, prompting then-U.S. President Donald Trump to demand that the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense provide Congress with a report on everything they knew about UFOs. This set off a chain of sensational statements from former military personnel. It turned out that soldiers often witness strange flying objects that can't be explained by any known human technology. On April 20th, 2021, in the American state of California, a massive black triangular-shaped UFO hovering over a military base was not only captured on video, but was also seen by at least 50 Marines. In a video shot by soldiers on their smartphones at a military base, we've got five glowing objects arranged in a triangular formation. In their podcast called Weaponized, journalist Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp revealed these supposed UFO clips. According to Corbell, the object was about half the size of a football field. Now, this story could easily fall under the hoax category. After all, it did bring Corbell and Knapp some fame. But how do you explain the accounts of the 50 Marines and the footage they managed to capture on their smartphones? Ufologist and Stanford University professor Dr. Jerry Nolan stated that there's no reason to doubt the video's authenticity. So, we've got six videos and 50 witnesses. If this isn't a massive hallucination, then the story about the UFO flying over the military base falls into the close to the truth category on our list. Plus, in recent years, we've been getting an increasing number of official statements about humans stumbling upon flying saucers. And yet, perhaps the most famous case is the Roswell incident. This story has been surrounded by a heap of myths and conspiracy theories. But is there any truth in that mountain of evidence? It was the 4th of July, 1947, America's Independence Day. 
Late at night, a local farmer named William Brazel heard a loud boom accompanied by a blinding flash. He figured it was just a thunderstorm and went to bed. Then in the morning, he found debris of unknown origin in a field not far from his pasture. The farmer later recalled that the debris looked like foil that was impossible to tear. And on some of the pieces, as the man claimed, there were strange symbols resembling a mix of Chinese characters and Indian script. Colonel William Blanchard from the U.S. Air Force arrived at the scene and ordered a statement to be published in local newspapers. The statement mentioned that the Intelligence Division of the 509th Bomb Wing of the 8th Air Force had managed to acquire a flying disc. The reaction to this news was swift. By July 8th, American newspapers were full of sensational headlines about the discovery of an alien spacecraft. However, the military, represented by General Roger Mason Ramey, declared that it was all not true. On July 9th, the Roswell Daily Record newspaper completely refuted the report published the day before. General Ramey's explanations sounded quite convincing. According to him, a weather balloon had crashed near the town of Roswell. To prove his point, General Ramey presented the wreckage to the journalists. The military allowed a close examination and photographs and even let them touch the aircraft parts. The reporters didn't see anything mysterious. Those were just ordinary parts of a weather balloon. It seems that UFOs really had nothing to do with the case, although it's not that simple. Journalists suspected that the military might have swamped the wreckage. They demanded a face-to-face -face meeting with Colonel Blanchard, who had initially announced the flying disc. However, when they arrived at Roswell Air Force Base, the journalists were told that the colonel had gone on vacation and the meeting never took place. This strange coincidence raises the question, was the U.S. government actually hiding something? This story might have been forgotten, but in the late 1970s, an interview with Major Jesse Marshall came to light. He was the chief intelligence officer of the 509th Bomb Wing, and he was at the crash site in 1947. Marcel claimed that all the photographs depicting the aircraft's wreckage presented in the official report were fake, and the military's official version was falsified. This information inches the Roswell incident one step closer to the truth, since what Major Marcel described, recalling what he saw at the crash site, matched completely with the account of the farmer, William Brazel. Marcel's words encouraged other witnesses to come forward. According to their statements at the crash site, they not only saw the wreckage of the aircraft, but also the extraterrestrial beings themselves. But still, there's a lot to think about. Why did Major Marcel keep a low profile for so many years? Well, it could be explained by his military duty to hold his tongue at the time of the incident. But what about the ordinary townsfolk who also witnessed the wreckage? Why did they stay silent until now? You see, thanks to this UFO crash story, the small town of Roswell quickly turned into a real mecca for flying saucer enthusiasts from all around the world. Just with its annual UFO festival held in July, Roswell draws in thousands of visitors. Altogether, tourism brings more than $14 million to the city each year. So, could this really be a well-planned hoax? On December 15, 2005, at the age of 84, Walter Hoff passed away. He was the one who, back in 1947, composed the statement about the discovery of unidentified flying object wreckage. In his will, which Walter Hoff's relatives revealed after his death, the former military man claimed he'd seen a flying saucer-like object at the Roswell base. And not far from it, he'd also spotted bodies covered with a tarp. Hoff managed to glimpse only the heads of the creatures. According to him, they were larger than those of regular humans, and the bodies under the tarp were about the size of 10-year-old children. 
But there's a serious reason to be skeptical about the former lieutenant's words. The thing is, Walter Haas' daughter Julia Schuster headed Roswell's International UFO Museum back in 2005. Given the constant flow of tourists, that business certainly generated a healthy profit. One way or another, something indeed happened at the Roswell Air Base in 1947. But what was it really? In February of 1994, at the request of Congressman Stephen Schiff, the U.S. General Accounting Office began an investigation into the Roswell incident. During the investigation, nothing was found that could in any way prove that extraterrestrials visited Earth. However, experts were intrigued by declassified data from a project created to track nuclear weapon testing in the USSR. In the 1940s, this top-secret project was named Project Mogul. Its most important component was a structure consisting of weather balloons and sound wave tracking equipment. According to the report, some witnesses might have mistaken it for the wreckage of a flying saucer. The report states that Project Mogul was assigned a secrecy level of A3, the highest at the time. This could explain why authorities were inconsistent in their statements and wanted to forget the incident as quickly as possible. Maybe this case, indeed, has nothing to do with aliens and UFOs. But there's still a significant flaw in the 1994 report. The components of Project Mogul's structure were unlikely to surprise anyone with their appearance, especially someone who had dealt with similar devices before. Both Will William Brazel and Jesse Marcel had seen the wreckage of meteorological balloons on multiple occasions. Could it be that the military encountered something truly unusual? Or were they pursuing completely different goals while using alien tales as a cover-up? In early June of 2023, former military intelligence agent David Grush claimed that the U.S. military had discovered an undamaged alien spacecraft at the crash site. Grush also said that the government was using secret UFO research programs as a tool in the arms race. He insisted that the intelligence agency unlawfully withheld information from Congress about the successful discovery of an extraterrestrial spaceship. Furthermore, he alleged that over several decades, the Pentagon, other countries, and defense contractors had found numerous surviving and partially damaged alien spacecraft. Grush also filed a complaint stating that he'd been subjected to unlawful persecution for leaking confidential information. But unfortunately, the former intelligence agent doesn't have any clear evidence. It looks a lot like a hoax. However, skeptics put forward a more intriguing theory. Retired Army Colonel Carl Nell suggested that UFOs might be a government trick used to divert public attention and gain support for military programs. After all, if you show people that there's an extraterrestrial threat looming over humanity, it's much easier to justify funding for the military and the arms industry. According to Nell, the aliens are a thoroughly planned government fabrication, and there are no real flying saucers whatsoever. Meanwhile, Jonathan Gray, a retired colonel and National Air and Space Intelligence Center officer, says that countries were indeed competing, but in identifying UFO crashes and landings, not to better understand distant civilizations or establish contact with extraterrestrials, but to gain a significant advantage in warfare. Gray also revealed the existence of secret research programs that have been ongoing since the early 20th century. David Grush insists it's crucial to disclose this information and halt the global arms race as soon as possible. He believes it's high time to prepare people for contact with aliens. But can we really trust all these claims? Don't forget that none of the witnesses have provided any strong evidence. 
Perhaps they themselves are part of a well-organized political-slash-military hoax. But if cases of contact with UFOs and aliens aren't just fiction, is it really worth sharing this with the general public? Las Vegas, the United States, June of 2023. Police captured footage of a suspicious UFO hovering in the night sky. Shortly after, state residents started bombarding the police with reports claiming they'd seen aliens. In a state of panic, one of the locals told the dispatcher that extraterrestrial beings were on his property. Despite an extensive search, no new information surfaced, and the police had to close the case. Curiously enough, the incident with aliens in Las Vegas happened after David Grush had made his statement. It seems like this story could be chalked up to overactive imagination. Most likely, people influenced by what they'd heard from former intelligence agents genuinely believed they were seeing aliens. But if the information about aliens and UFOs is either a figment of someone's imagination or a hoax, what do we make of mentions of extraterrestrial beings and remarkable flying machines in the Bible? If aliens are not just a story or rumors, when did their first documented contact with humans occur? A few years ago, British UFO researchers from the so-called Aetherius Society proved that the Bible is filled with accounts of contact with aliens. According to them, the Old Testament vividly describes Moses' encounter with extraterrestrial beings on Mount Sinai. The text mentions that the mountain was enveloped in smoke, lightning, and noise. Members of the society believe that these words suggest a UFO landing, although this example with Moses isn't the only one. Ufologists claim that the Book of Ezekiel also describes the prophet's encounter with creatures from outer space. Ezekiel narrates events that took place in the early 6th century BC by the river Kebar. He described how the heavens suddenly opened, and he saw a great cloud, billowing fire, and a glow around it. In the fire, the prophet saw beings looking like people, though each of them had four wings. Of course, a man living two and a half thousand years ago knew nothing that such a marvelous phenomenon could be compared to. But quite recently, researchers noticed that Ezekiel's description bears a striking resemblance to a Kamov helicopter system, where four pairs of wings rotate on a single axis. Ezekiel wrote that on the ground near each creature, there was a wheel, and above their heads, he saw something like a dome. Could he have meant a cockpit? Beneath the blue dome, which the prophet described as made of sapphire, he claimed there sat a being resembling a human. Ezekiel's words may sound fantastical, but I place them in the close to the truth section. How else can we explain such a detailed description of aircraft technology by someone who lived in the 5th century BC? Meanwhile, a discovery made by the Swedish Ocean X diving team could suggest that aliens have been interacting with humans for 10,000 years. The group of researchers, led by Peter Lindbergh and Dennis Eber, returned from an expedition in the Baltic Sea in the summer of 2011 with a very curious sonar image. They claimed it depicted a sunken UFO. The image showed a round object with a diameter of 61 meters, featuring elements similar to ramps, staircases, and other structures. The finding had precise geometric shapes and was incredibly reminiscent of the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. Members of the OceanX team decided to share their discovery with the media and raise funds for further research. They conducted several expeditions, but it wasn't until 2018 that they managed to take a clearer 3D picture, which revealed yet another intriguing detail. Just ahead of the so-called furrow, they discovered a rocky protrusion split into two perfectly even parts, as if something had initially slammed into it and then plowed through the seabed further. 
Andreas Olsen, an expert in underwater archaeology, said he had never seen anything like it. Judging by its shape and symmetry, it could well be a human-made structure. They also found mysterious indentations with angles that were precisely 90 degrees. Moreover, according to the members of the OceanX team, electronic chronometers, cameras, and satellite phones ceased to function near the object. Examinations of a sample chipped off from the Baltic anomaly conducted at the Wiseman Institute revealed it was a stone with traces of burnt organic material. What on earth is this? One of the leading theories says it's a flying saucer since it does have a similar shape. Besides, while studying the photos, some enthusiasts even spotted corridors and a pilot house. As a Star Wars fan, I quite like this theory, so I'd put it in the close-to-the-truth category. However, former Swedish naval officer and expert on the history of the Second World War, Anders Ortelis, suggested that the structure could be the foundation of a device meant to block the movement of British and Russian submarines. Otellis claims that the construction was supposed to be made of double-layered concrete reinforced with wire mesh to confuse radar systems. This might explain why the equipment of the diving team repeatedly malfunctioned near this enigmatic object. In other words, no matter how much this thing resembles a giant flying saucer on the outside, at the end of the day, it doesn't have anything to do with aliens. Or does it? Scientists analyze samples of sediment taken from the depressions on the object. It turns out that the age of these samples is 14,000 years. This means that the so-called Millennium Falcon has been on the ocean floor for a very long time and is unlikely to be a regular structure for radar jamming. But why, despite the abundance of UFO sightings, do we still not have a definitive answer? Most often, UFOs are mistaken for natural phenomena or experimental aircraft, yet about 5% of all sightings really defy explanation. And despite numerous hoaxes, cases of overactive imagination, and possible government operations, I can't deny that we're not alone in the universe. Otherwise, our list wouldn't have stories that ended up in the close-to-the-truth category. Now, tell me what you think about it. Are reports of extraterrestrials true? Or is this a shameless manipulation?